Welcome back to Western Wild. In this video, we eat way too much meat at a restaurant in the middle of nowhere. Camp at a peaceful, dispersed site. Drive in the sand dunes for the first time. And tackle rough roads in search of a lost forest. From our home in Sisters, Oregon, we headed two hours southeast to the little town of Silver Lake in an area known as the Oregon Outback. Tessa planned this trip as a birthday present for me, so all credit goes to her for putting together such a fun adventure in an area that we've been meaning to explore for a while. After miles of driving through sagebrush plains, we turned off for our destination, the Cowboy Dinner Tree Restaurant. Long ago, cowboys would stop here for a hot meal midway through their cattle drives. These days, visitors come out for the Western experience and their famously large portions. There's also a well-stocked gift shop next to the restaurant. Can you describe the smell right now? Roasting, slow cooking, barbecue meat, deliciousness. Okay, oh, yeah, of course. Yep. Yep, we can get, I think, uh, 80 steaks on here. At a time? Yeah. Which, oh, yeah. We, which we never do, except for we've done it one time. We had a big group that was like eating in and out. Yeah. Five. How long does it take to go? That's so sweet. So sweet. Old purses. After Tessa roped her first bowl, we got called to our table. Eating at this place is a real experience, so we'll do our best to walk you through it. For drinks, we both got these massive jars of strawberry lemonade. First course is a salad with a choice of ranch or very spicy honey mustard dressing. Next up is a bowl of cowboy bean soup and some delicious dinner rolls. Course number two. Talk a little bit about the strategy here. So we're trying, we're on course two of like, what, four? I think four, I think, four. yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're trying to not leave here feeling like two chantilly. So we had a little bowl of bean soup and some delicious rolls, although I think we could have eaten all of that just on our own without any problem if there was no other food. But we're trying to not leave here like feeling full. So we'll see what's next. Finally, the main course arrived. You get two options at the cowboy dinner tree. It's massive steak or whole chicken. <laughs> Lots of bird. Whole chicken. <laughs> this will be coming home. This will very much be coming home. <laughs> All that meat. Potatoes. It's still moving. Got a pink. That's the chicken. It's good. It's well done. <laughs> one would unlike, hope. Unlike, one would hope. <laughs> unlike your uh, steak. <laughs> if I weren't pregnant, I would be having a steak. <laughs> the aftermath. And course three has conquered me. Didn't even get through half of that steak. Yeah, that's dinner for tomorrow night. Yes, it is. Same here. I had roughly half a chicken and we're stuffed. The final course was light and lovely with fresh berries on top of soft cake and all covered in sweet cream. Their bellies full and the sun getting low, we headed to the nearby Fremont Winema National Forest to find camp. This being the start of shoulder season, there were plenty of camps available. 
and it didn't take long for us to find this great site in the Little Creek Valley. Good morning. Oh, yes. We're at the Silver Silver Lake, Silver View Cafe. Silver Lake. Silver Lake. Where are we? Uh, it's early still. Uh, cafe. We kind of noped out of making breakfast in camp, and we found this fun little place. So the ladies are awesome and sweet, and we're not alive yet, but this is fun. The cafe was connected to a small bar. I love finding little local spots like this and can only imagine how fun this place would be on a Friday night. The pancakes scarfed down, we hit the road to Christmas Valley. So we're all ready for stage two of our little weekend adventure here. As you can see, we are on sand out in the Christmas Valley sand dunes. Uh, we've done a little bit of sand driving, mostly on sandy tracks before, but this will be our first time out on actual dunes. As you can see, we got the uh, whip flag all set up, uh, got the Oregon ATV permit. Tess is currently airing us down right now. I think we're going to start out at around 15 PSI or so, give us a little bit of room if we have to drop further as we go. Um, not going to go too wild today necessarily with our, our dune driving for a couple reasons. Uh, Tessa being pregnant, we want to be extra safe not to have any uh, harsh impacts or anything like that. Uh, and then also, this is a really heavy truck. Um, <laughs> and our tires are only around 33 and a half. So, not necessarily the, the best vehicle to go out in the dunes, but we'll give it a go. Uh, if we had other rigs with us, we'd probably be uh, a little more itching to... To, to send it a little bit more. Um, but since it's just us, heavy rig, gonna play it safe a little bit today. Just enjoy the dunes and the views and uh, have a good time. So this is our whip flag setup. We got a rig that attaches to our bull bar on the tube. It's adjustable there so that you can set it at the angle you wanna get it at. Nice little setup, we'll see how it goes.
Saturday. It's almost a little eerie. But kind of cool. Like, it's nice to not really have to worry about running into other vehicles as much, but... Feels like we wasted money on our red flag, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's still kind of required. But uh, on the flip side, yeah, we got to be extra careful not to uh, get stuck because there is... There's no help. <laughs> no one out here. We're not calling Casey Liddell again. we've had the drone out in a couple months and it has logged me out of my DJI account and I can't get back in and now it does not oh, of course I get the camera out and it kind of works it's not wanting to go in this direction it only goes in this line if I turn it trying to go forward and back it only goes that way so Got our one drone shot for the day. I think we might be grounded for the rest of it, which is too bad because it's super cool out here in the dunes. But uh, don't want to risk uh, losing the drone in this situation. That's that. So let's see if we can win. Huzzah. At least that was well done. She's down. Damn. Now Tess is walking down to the bottom of the hill to get a couple more shots here. Real bummer about the drone. I uh, was looking forward to using it out here, but... gonna lie I was a little worried about traction coming into this um, with our heavy truck but in truth that hasn't been the problem the real issue through here is navigation and finding lines that are not gonna put you off a cliff edge which we might like have this one. over which here we have right here yeah yeah back so, it up back it up it's uh because we've played this long wheelbase game before, haven't we? We have. Also don't want to be going off of an edge. We've done that before too. Yes, we have. Um, That's less fun. <laughs> Get home safely, but yeah, it's kind of kind of fun exploring around and seeing what route you can make. And I think also recognizing that uh, you can't take the straight line path that you normally would.
Okay, so one thing to consider out here is that not all of the roads that show up on the map as accessing the uh, sand area are actually accessible. A lot of it goes through private land. Um, so when you come in, make sure to mark where you came in, which we did, trying a different way out. It's not working out. I think we're actually we're coming up on another private property gate right here. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> Turning around again. So we're all wrapped up at the dunes. That was a good time. Now we are trying to find the Lost Forest, which is, as the name would imply, a little bit tricky to get to since uh, it's supposedly cut off by private land. Oh, we got some mud. Not enough mud to <laughs> film that. And so. now, after Yee. kind of cruising around on the dunes, no issues, we're actually on a slicker, sandier, more fun. More fun washed out road to get through here. <laughs> As you can tell by the camera going every which way. Yeah, so having a good time. Hopefully can actually make it through this way. Stay tuned. I'd show you my view, but we kind of hit a little mud puddle. And that's kind of that. So after a road that started out sandy, whoopy, and fun, and then turned into rocky, potentially tire-popping, jagging, bumpy, gross, my least favorite kind of off-road experience uh, for several miles, finally made it to the Lost Forest. I'd say the tundra is going to need a bath after this experience. <laughs> Man. Really though, it looks like someone spilled milk all over the truck. Yeah, I don't think anyone can accuse us of being mole crawlers. All right, so we are finally found our way into the Lost Forest and got some bumps. Um, cool to see that there's like this random chunk of ponderosas that ended up in the middle of we, oh. <laughs> the little piece, um, ended up in the middle of literally the desert. Um, they're kind of some scraggly ass looking ponderosas, <laughs> but, um, yeah, kind of fun. Also kind of weird, eerie, I think would be the best way to put it, but we checked it out. I don't know if it's a spot that you'd necessarily want to like make a destination and camp in. If you're like mm -hmm. in the area, it can be of interest. Also, yeah, definitely four by four, high clearance recommended. There's... Yeah, don't, don't bring your super. <laughs> There's some here. gnarly bits. Lots of whoops, lots of sand. Um, <laughs> be careful. Yeah. We have got <laughs> to get the truck bed seal in place. Bad. Second thing to malfunction today after the drone, the compressor will not turn off. So in a way it's a good thing, at least it broke in the on position so that we can air up, turn it off by just unplugging it from power, but it's still not cool. Alright folks, so that just about does it for our Christmas Valley Cowboy Dinner Tree weekend adventure. Been fun. Had a few little mishaps here and there, but trucks in one piece, war in pe one piece, and had a good time. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you enjoy seeing more of these adventures, please hit the subscribe button. And as always, stay wild.